NASDAQ hits record highs in this tech-heavy market. I'm Darren, and this is Three Things for Thursday, June the 6th. With birth rates being a big crisis in Japan, the government is pushing a dating app to get people hitched. With a thorough and secure registration process, the hope is more marriages will happen and babies be born. A substantial amount of funds has been earmarked for this cause. Births have fallen eight years in a row. Get busy, Japan. It appears that the NBA may have a deal soon with ESPN, NBC, and Amazon that will net them $76 billion over 11 years. NBC would pay $2.5 billion a year and air 100 games a season, with half of those exclusively on their Peacock streaming service. Will you pay extra? The conservative 5th U.S. Appeals Court threw out Gary Gensler's attempt at more transparency, fairness, and accountability in private funds, which are not regulated like the rest of the industry. The funds say that it would indirectly affect ordinary investors via their pension and retirement plans. Maybe directly affecting the ordinary investor daily is better. Trade while you sleep across time zones with Arbitrage Trade Assist. Sign up today at ArbitrageTrade.com. Arbitrage Trade is your trusted source for business, finance, and tech info. Uh-oh, Brad's buzzed. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he's starting with the woots. <laughs> <laughs> and now a speech. I just want to say that friendship is about heart. Heart and brain. Who's with me? Good thing is, he knows when he's buzzed. And my brain is saying, when it's time to go home, somebody call me a ride. Love that guy. Me too. Know your buzzed warning signs? Call for a ride when it's time to go home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. Mm. Understanding global liquidity cycles and their impact on financial markets and the economy. Daniel writes, Global liquidity cycles refer to the ebb and flow of capital availability across the world's financial systems. These cycles are driven by central bank policies, investor sentiment, and economic conditions, and they significantly influence financial markets and economic activity. Understanding these cycles is crucial for investors, policymakers, and businesses alike. So what is a global liquidity cycle? Well, it's the periodic expansion and contraction of global financial liquidity, essentially the ease with which money can flow through the financial system. When liquidity is abundant, borrowing costs are low and credit is easily accessible, leading to the economic expansion and rising asset prices. Conversely, when liquidity tightens, borrowing becomes more expensive, credit is harder to come by, economic growth slows, and asset prices often decline. So how does this all work? Well, global liquidity is primarily influenced by central banks, particularly those in major economies like the U.S. Fed, the European Central Bank, and the Bank of Japan. These institutions manage liquidity through monetary policy tools such as interest rates and quantitative easing. There's an expansion phase where the central banks lower interest rates and engage in quantitative easing to inject money into the economy, making it cheaper to borrow and invest. This phase typically follows economic downturns or financial crises. Then there's peak liquidity. As economy conditions improve, liquidity reaches its peak. Asset prices, including stocks, real estate, and commodities often hit record highs during this period. Then there's the contraction phase. To prevent the economy from overheating and to control inflation, central banks start to raise interest rates and withdraw liquidity by reducing their asset purchases or by selling assets. This phase can be gradual or rapid, depending on economic conditions. So then there's the trough. Liquidity reaches its lowest point as central banks continue to tighten policies. Economic growth slows and asset prices may decline sharply. Eventually, central banks may ease policies again to stimulate growth starting a new cycle. Global liquidity cycles have profound impacts on financial markets and the broader economy. During liquidity expansion, stock markets typically rally due to lower borrowing costs and increased investment. Conversely, during contraction, stock markets often face volatility and declines as financing becomes more expensive and investor sentiment turns cautious. Expansion phases drive bond prices up and yields down as investors seek higher returns in a low interest rate environment. During contraction, bond yields rise and prices fall as interest rates increase. Lower interest rates during liquidity expansion make mortgages more affordable, boosting real estate prices. As liquidity contracts, higher borrowing costs can lead to a cooling housing market. Abundant liquidity supports economic growth by facilitating consumer spending and business investment. When liquidity tightens, economic activity slows, and the risk of recession increases. As of mid-2024, we are witnessing a transition from an expansionary phase towards a contractionary phase. Following the COVID-19 pandemic, central banks worldwide implemented aggressive monetary easing to support economies. This led to a surge in liquidity, fueling economic recovery, and significant gains in financial markets. However, rising inflation has prompted central banks to shift toward tightening monetary policy. 
The Fed has already begun raising interest rates and tapering its asset purchases, with other central banks signaling similar moves. This marks the beginning of the contraction phase, characterized by reduced liquidity and potentially higher volatility in financial markets. The current tightening of global liquidity suggests several potential outcomes. Financial markets may experience heightened volatility as investors adjust to the new monetary policy environment. Stock and bond markets could face significant fluctuations. Higher borrowing costs may dampen consumer spending and business investment, leading to slower economic growth. Some sectors, such as real estate and technology, may be partially impacted. While tightening cycles often bring challenges, they also present opportunities. Investors may find value in sectors that benefit from higher interest rates, such as financials or in regions where central banks maintain more accommodative policies. Companies and economies will need to adapt to the new landscape of tighter liquidity. This could spur innovation and efficiency improvements as businesses seek to navigate higher financing costs. In summary, global liquidity cycles are a fundamental aspect of the financial landscape, influencing market dynamics and economic trends. As we move through the current contraction phase, understanding these cycles can help investors and policymakers make informed decisions in an evolving economic environment. Stop watching Start Living Using Pips, our AI bot. Go to arbitragetrade.com and check out Arbitrage Trade Assist. Kids across America are going to school hungry. Millions of kids every day. But one simple thing can help change all of this for a hungry child in America. Good, healthy food and the energy it brings. With help from caring people across America, No Kid Hungry is providing healthy meals and hope to hungry kids so they can build better futures. To learn more about ending child hunger in America, go to helpnokidhungry.org today. Pip's Pick of the Day and it's Throwback Thursday. I give you a pick of the day every Monday through Wednesday and then on Thursdays, I review all of the AI bot Pips wins over the months. Pips makes it easy for me with his 12 indicators. This week it's Angio Dynamics, A-N-G-O, and they operate as a medical device company which engage in the development, manufacturing, and sale of medical devices for vascular access, surgery, peripheral vascular disease, and oncology. This was the pick of the day on May 29th after a green X appeared from our algos. This means a reversal from the previous red X and the possibility of heading back up increased. Sure enough, ANGO opened at $6.12 on the 29th and was as high as $6.51 yesterday. That's over 6%. Thanks, Pips, for the heads up once again. Want to see the graphs and 12 indicators? Look for my video post about Throwback Thursdays on social media where I break it all down. Put our AI by Pips to work for you with Arbitrage Trade Assist. We're not financial advisors, we offer a service at arbitragetrade.com. Arbitrage Trade Analytics LLC is a privately held research company. Arbitrage Trade Analytics LLC is solely responsible for the preparation and distribution of the contents of this podcast. The opinions offered in this podcast are for informational purposes only and are not intended to function as investment advice. Seek a duly licensed professional for investment advice. For more information about the informational research and services offered by Arbitrage Trade Analytics LLC, please visit arbitragetrade.com.